freaking hammered it. All right, so um, Mille Lacs Lake is huge. I mean, really, really intimidating. I mean, look, it is, you can't even see all the way across it on some sides. And so I, I thought it was gonna be very difficult to really find a spot, but I, I attack this lake just like I do every other lake that has a lake map. I go to the internet, I go on my Navy on its app on my phone, and I do some research and I look for points. I look for things that stick, places that stick out off of the bank or off of uh, the anywhere the land or island or anything else sticks out a whole lot further and that's kind of where I'm sitting right now as you can see this this little spot right here sticks out a long ways and it's really shallow uh, I'm in about 12 and a half feet of water right now uh, idling around and I'm looking for uh, for rocks I'm looking for outside grass lines I'm looking for anything that's gonna hold a fish but the first thing you do is you go on your map you do your study you look for these points you look for uh, anomalies under under the surface and that's typically the places that hold bass the anomalies I'm talking about are like humps steep drop-offs uh, things like that and the places I'm gonna look with this area right here I'm gonna start off looking deep and I'm gonna start looking right around the outside grass line and it gets all the way up into about eight feet up here and I'm gonna look up there too. All right, so let me idle around and show you guys what I'm looking for. First of all, let's get familiar with the fish finder. That's your standard sonar, that's down imaging, and that's side imaging. Okay, hope you guys can see that. I know there's a little bit of a glare, but that's kind of what I'm looking at. And I'm gonna point out what's fish. What you see right now is all grass. <clears throat> Looks like clouds and uh, we just were really shallow we're going down to 12 you see that that hard edge of that grass line ends at about 12 feet deep and then you got rock and soft and uh, actually hard bottom sandy bottom to rock okay so that's kind of what I'm looking at I'll idle around until I see some fish and I'll show them to you there's a little school of fish right there off to the right side So now the school of fish just showed up right here and right there and right there same school of fish. I'm just going to idle around and look for fish. What I have laid out on the deck to fish with today, it's uh, kind of a, a spectrum of the different types of baits that I use when I'm searching for any fish, but I kind of adjusted the colors for the colors that smallmouth like and the color of the water. So let's go to them right now. We've got a whopper up. You notice it's chartreuse for some reason. They say that. Smallmouth bass love chartreuse baits. So, do a whopper flopper on there. I've already thrown it around a couple of times. Got a big one to follow it all the way to the boat. But, uh, start off with a whopper flopper. Then I've got a square bill. That color might change a little bit. But, uh, that's a, a go to search bait for me. Um, and a spinner bait. And those are pretty much my search baits, except for a topwater I have on the other side of the boat. Got a drop shot rig little worm right there like I said the worm colors will probably change um, and then over here I got the ever faithful Ned rig a frog just in case I try to get up into some grass and stuff like that but I probably won't pick that one up and then there's my topwater bait it's not chartreuse because I don't have one but that works in clear water um, and uh, and yeah that's uh, Some of those things might change. Uh, they probably won't uh, too much. I've got a chatterbait. If I get into some some deeper grass and stuff, and I start getting that spinnerbait hung up, I've got a chatterbait that's exactly the same color. But uh, that's uh, that's my setups, and uh, or that's my lures that I'm going to be using. And uh, let's uh, let's start searching. I've just pulled up on this shallow hump that's right off of some deep water. I'm gonna throw a spinnerbait around and see what I can get. All right, so I spent about the last 20 minutes going back and forth out in a deep water, back up into shallow water, and I found this little hump that drops off pretty, pretty quickly down into this deeper water. And uh, there's a lot of bigger rocks on top of it, just different than what I've, I've seen. I've seen a lot of little rocks and stuff like that, but a lot of bigger rocks up on this hump. So I pulled off on it, 
And I'm going to start off with a search bait. I got a spinner bait on. I'm going to throw it about 15, 20 times at least until I lose confidence in it. I'm going to try different types of baits. The goal is to, um, is to figure out what kind of a mood the bass are in, no matter what kind of bass it is. I think the, the most important thing is to find out what kind of a mood they're in. Do they want it chased? Do they want it, do they want to chase it? Do they want it on the bottom? Do they want it fast? Do they want it slow? Do they want it hopped? Um, you know, you just kind of, kind of try to figure them out because bass are really moody. And so sometimes they'll give you little clues like, um, like the, sometimes they'll do what I, what I call fluffing or when they swing and they miss your bait and you lose, especially a spinner bait or a crankbait, you lose feel on that crankbait for just a split second. You don't feel it and then you feel it again. And it means that a bass just swung at your bait and missed it. And, uh, and that tells me, when that happens, that tells me to go and grab something and throw it on the bottom, maybe a jig, maybe a, like a Ned rig that I've got it tied on or a drop shot and fish a little bit slower, fish on the bottom um, and try something a little bit more natural. A lot of times when they chase, when they follow it all the way to the boat and turn, I'll just change color. Usually when they do that, they, they're almost ready to commit, but not quite because something looks a little different and I'll change the color to a more natural color. So when they swing and miss at it, change the mood or change the, to your tempo or change from, uh, from moving bait to a bottom bait. And, but when they follow it all the way to the boat, change color. Pretty cool. And so I'm going to sit here, and it's not a very big hump, so I'm going to sit here and I'm just going to blanket cast it with everything I've got until I can figure these things out. So I know there's fish here. I know they're not going anywhere. So now I can just kind of stay back a little bit, make long cast into that area, and just kind of work it, work it with a drop shot, because that's kind of what I've got confidence in right now. Now Mille Lacs has zebra mussels in it. Um, one thing to know about zebra mussels, the way you deal with them when you're fishing is, you try not to fish too many things that go on the bottom and if you do use fluorocarbon line it doesn't uh, the zebra mussels don't um, don't cut that near as easily as they do braid believe it or not the zebra mussels are really really sharp and the you'll be fighting a fish and the fish will rub it rub the line across some zebra mussels and if it's braid it cuts it's fluorocarbon it just gets all scratched up and a lot of times you can still get the fish in so Definitely, definitely go with fluorocarbon or braid like I am right now, braid with a fluorocarbon leader. And the water's so clear, I've got an eight foot leader on my drop shot rod. And I just changed my Ned rig up to all fluorocarbon just because I had a reel that had all fluorocarbon on it. This just took it off for me. Look at that. I caught this fish by the sinker. Did I? No, no way. Yes, I did. I just caught a fish. Nope. Just broke the sinker off. That's all it did. The whole leader off. Huh. Little bitty guy. Got the leader caught in some uh, zebra mussels and broke it off. And I was going, or I snagged it. I was going over there to get it. And a uh, little smallmouth took the bait off for me and broke my leader. <laughs> so I've worked my way over onto the other side of this little hump and I uh, caught that one little one by accident <laughs> and I just got a little bite. I don't feel anything. I'm just beginning to think that there's not any big ones on this spot because if the little ones are going to bite, the big ones should too. At least something better than a little 10 incher. Now, one thing I do know about smallmouth is that uh, they will, they love the sun. They get up, they get active, they get shallow, and uh, they'll start cruising around and, and really hunting because they are a sight feeding fish. They'll get up on these flats and they'll just, they'll go a, a mile to hit something. So sun is not a bad thing. Matter of fact, I'd like to have more of it. I think I figured something out. I think I figured something out.
All right, so let's talk about what I figured out. I figured out that they are in the really, really tall, thick grass. I'm in 10 feet of water. The grass comes all the way up to about four feet, so it's six feet high. I'm out in the middle of the freaking lake. I'm a mile from shore, 30 miles from that shore, but who cares? Um, <laughs> but I figured them out. It is a reaction bite. I've got this, uh, this Z-Man, uh, what is it, a uh, jackhammer chatterbait colored the belly of my trailer chartreuse uh, just same one I've been catching them on all day it's just I finally figured out how to replicate a bite it's no they're not just scattered they're on this really tall grass but you've got to bump the grass so I'm throwing it out and I'm bumping as much grass as I possibly can which means I've got to let it sink down four to five feet and then I've got to reel very very slowly and then kind of pause every once in a while to give the bait a chance to get back down on top of the grass and I've just got to tick the top of the grass and these fish are down in these holes on the edge of this, this grass or out in the middle of the grass too, but they're in these holes. But if I can tick the grass and come and rip through the other side, I'm getting bit. Not every cast, but it's about every 20 casts. So pretty cool. And all I did was use my map on this one. Just went and I found the shallowest sh uh, place out in the middle of nowhere. Just a, you know, a big, huge hump. I bet you it's 80 acres or so. So just going to slowly piece my way through it for the last few hours of my fishing day. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get back on the big motor and look around. Try to look for some big rocks or something. Something different than this. Not feeling it. Having a little bit of a hard time. Let me think about what I've already learned. I had one bite at the beginning, eight to ten feet of water on the outside edge. I had one follow me, eight to ten feet of water on the outside edge on a hump. Caught that little one on a hump. So they're shallow. They're on shallow spots. On the outside edge or on the outer perimeter of this area. And I'm sitting in the inner perimeter. I mean, I see fish on the fish finder, but I don't know if they're smallmouth or not. So I'm gonna make a couple more casts and I'm gonna get the heck up off of this spot and go back to the outside edge outer perimeter of this big huge point all right so what happened was i was idling around looking at my side scan and i passed what i think is a really big rock and uh so I stopped, to, I marked it on my GPS and then I'm sneaking up to it, trying to find it without going over top of it. But uh, hopefully it's got some fish on it. One thing is that I noticed was in this area right here, there was a lot more fish uh, than, I'm, no, than I've normally seen. More bait fish, more larger fish, whether they're bass or not, I don't know. This is a lot tougher than I thought it was. I have to keep rethinking it there's one. Oh, that's a big one too it's almost exact same spot that i caught that little one and i just came back to it Ooh, i hope i can get him in the boat boy it's a good one too and i don't have the net ready so we're gonna fight him a little bit Whoa, they fight. Let's see if I can get the net ready without losing him. Man, he's a good one. Goodness gracious. I don't know if he's good for Malax, but he's good for me in my book. Yes! <laughs> 
Whew. Man, oh man, they fight like a freaking freight train. Look at that freaking smallmouth, guys. <laughs> oh man. Whew. Look at that thing. Yes. <laughs> man, he's about man, two and a half. He hit it like a freight train and he fought like a train. Golly, I love this. Oh, I'm gonna let him go, but I'm gonna get some good video of it. So what I did is I switched to a Jack Hammer, Hammer Chatterbait. And I don't know if you guys can tell this or not, but I dyed the, uh, the skirt a little bit chartreuse and a little bit of the belly of the, of the uh, blade minnow that I'm using, it's a Strike King blade minnow. So it's a little bit of chartreuse, but it's not quite so bright. A lot of flash. And oh my gosh, that was awesome. There's another one. Cool. This one's bigger. Oh my gosh. Oh. Man. Oh. Mm. Well, I'm gonna stay right here and catch a little. things you catch out on this, these lakes. A little walleye on a drop shot. You gotta release them in this lake though. Can't keep them and eat them in, on a Malax. But that was pretty cool. What? Oh, this is a big one. Ready. Oh, look at this thing, guys. Oh my gosh. Yes. Woo. <laughs> oh, look at this Malax stud. <laughs> man, oh man. Got him on a draw shot. Freaking giant. <laughs> Two point nine nine. Oh, three pounds. Freaking three pound smallmouth. <laughs> yes. Oh. I guess that's how you find big old studs on this lake. I'm gonna keep fishing. But uh, my goodness, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I uh, hope you learned a little bit about fish finders and how to find fish offshore. I don't know. I just kind of came out here just to see if I could do it. And I did it. How awesome is that? Well, be sure to check out uh, all of my, actually, you know what? 
be sure to check out all my favorite channels. Uh, go to my main page, my main channel page, and look at all my favorites on the side. Check them out. Make sure you're subscribed to every one of them. Uh, those are my buddies. Those are the guys I work with. Those are the those are the good guys in this game. So uh, yeah, be sure to check all those uh, those guys out. But uh, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go ahead and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you. <laughs>